AMA for letting uh, him in the building. <laughs> um, do you have a HDMI plug? Uh, uh, we do. It's a display port. Do you have a display port? We're kind of excited about this new technology transponders anymore. Actually, I was going through it earlier and he kept reading me every time I went through it. Yep. Yeah, so I, I just want to give a really quick demo. I, I just heard that there was a timing system um, show b uh, or being presented, so I, I just thought I, I would chime quickly in and give you like a really quick um, view into what we are doing at TBS. Um, it's, it's nowhere near as polished and, and uh, multi-GP friendly as, as we want it to be, but um, the hope is that after this um, presentation, we can get a conversation going um, to kind of show off what we've got and, and where we, uh, it could it could go. Um, so basically, this is it. Um, it's three units. It's the timing system. This here is a Wi-Fi router and just a regular battery. Normally, this is enclosed, but for demo purposes, I, I kept it open. So um, here you can see these are the video receivers. They will receive the strength, si signal strength of the drone passing through. Um, and then here you have a processing unit that includes a web server, um, all of the, the UI features, race management, um, and pretty much anything you would want to do with it. So basically we've taken this and put it into like a Windows environment where we can program on it um, and it runs as a self-contained unit. So it doesn't really need that laptop. The laptop is just here for presentation. Um, if you want, you can see the URL up top. Um, you can also connect to um, this Wi-Fi router um, during the presentation with your mobile phones. <coughs> And you can then see this screen and manipulate it as you want. Um, I think, Florian, is there a password on the Wi-Fi? No, no. No? Okay. If so you don't understand the words, that's because they're really smart people words. <laughs> 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 like lobster. So, <laughs> that's smart people words. <laughs> Um, basically, the idea is that this is not only a race management tool for, for you guys as um, chapter organizers, but also for the pilots to see um, what position am I in, how fast was my last lap, and they can actually check that in real time. They can also see in real time um, the race that is going on, so that, that would be this screen. Um, and then you can see here, um, can you actually see my mouse? Yeah. So this is something that we made here for MultiGP especially um, because it's a big track. So we wanted to provide three times per track rather than just one time. So it becomes a whole interactive process where you can see, oh, player two is really catching up to player number one. Um, and and Wait, he's so, like... So just so you all understand, on the championship course, we're not only going to be tracking your time at the start finish, we'll have checkpoints throughout the course yeah. to see who's <laughs> gaining or falling behind. Uh, should be pretty exciting. So basically, um, is is that on race band? Uh, no. That's a no. Cup. Okay. So um, yeah, like I said, I didn't really prepare for a demo. But basically, if a player passes through the gate, this will um, signal green, so you can follow player number nine. Um, and the next feature, while I was wasting time talking, the 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 tracker actually took the initiative and continued to race. So basically, this is a race management that works by itself, autonomously. You just take the box, you put it onto the timing gate, you turn it on, and you would need then to connect it to a speakerphone, um, and then it will announce who's up next, um, uh, what pilot is currently racing, um, and, and then um, kind of take all of that hassle away from you um, and, and allow you to... Sorry? Trying to put me out of work. Uh, no, you can still make jokes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, exactly. So that's it hasn't the. Been fully translated into English, so <laughs> you might need a translator. Yeah, this. <laughs> oh, I, I can do that. <laughs> um, as, as you can see, it's a prototype system. So um, my company comes from Switzerland. Florian's company comes from Germany. So we work on a German basis, but um, translation shouldn't be too hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, this would be the ranking that's updated in real time um, and we've run races w uh, with up to I think 140 pilots or 130 pilots something like that um, up to 5,000 time scans uh, in a weekend uh, without a single miss so it's not only a VTX system that 
um, kind of works. Um, the, I, I know there's a lot of like the, the little personal trackers out there. Uh, I, I don't want to name any names, but um, sometimes they, they are not as accurate as they could be. Um, so, so this is a very robust system um, on the timing side. Um, the, the, basically, the, the user interface is what we're looking for feedback on. Um, yeah. What is it called? No name. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's the S. You can see it's a SRS simple tracker right now, but it's not on sale. <laughs> so. At the same time, it's eight uh, because we have eight uh, receivers here. No, no, no. And and a, a special feature of this system as well um, in in regards to maximum number is the maximum amount of um, people that you can push through in, in one race. So it, it's not a, it's not such a big requirement for the smaller races. But if you have a race like Chris is running here, um, there's going to be I think 140 pilots. Like yeah, and they want to race, right? If they come here and they race only three packs, they're they're going to be really pissed. So um, we want to get them through as many races as possible. And that's what this system um, kind of caters to. Because if, if you are as the race organizer, you can always blame it on the system. It's like the system has a five minute um, inter heat time or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and if the pilot is not ready at that time, then he just misses out and he can go on um, in the next round. Um, it, it was actually like in, in Germany, the, the, the seventh qualifying round, most of the pilots were just, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for today, I'm gonna have a beer. Uh, instead, uh, uh, we ran seven qualifying rounds with 130 pilots in one day. Brian uh, was there. He wouldn't have stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brian Morris would have been the one candidate that's like, oh, no, never mind, I'll, I'll do yours as well. <laughs> um, so what are we looking at time frame? When can we have some people test this? Can I have that one? <laughs> <laughs> Does it require, yeah. <laughs> it require the people actually for uh, uh, BTX? No. Okay. No. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really wanted to okay. touch so upon. Um, any frequency you want. Uh, so you can. the person with pilot's name in there. I mean, if you got multiple people on the same frequency, you know, sharing the same frequency. Well, you wouldn't be because you'd be. So you can't. You can run on the same frequency at the same time, um, but you can add uh, as many pilots as you want and then they will be um, automatically assigned once per day. Um, that's also one of the things that I really want to stress. Um, I, we copied that from MultiGP. Um, you arrive with one frequency and you leave that day in the qualifying day with that frequency. So you never touch your VTX. Um, that, that also allows us to let you guys choose which VTX you want to run um, because we can trust you to do that yesterday night <laughs> and, and not in a race uh, high pressure situation. Um, of course, once you go into the f uh, qualifying knockout rounds, people are going to be required to change uh, VTXs. But at that point, it's a lot less stressful because uh, you have a lot less people that are fighting for that um, time. So, do, so you, do you know how like James, let's say James ha had it there locally. How could his system push the pilot list into yours? Is that sort of how that, you would envision that working? That's, that, that's that's basically the conversation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think for the race tomorrow, uh, they're going to send me track information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, timing information as it goes through. Nice. Pilots go through. So I don't know what the collaboration will be in the future, but it'll be some similar. Yeah. yeah there was like lapsic support where filling out the like we know what heaps they're going to be in, we know what channels they're going to be in. But we pull that from a heat on multi GP and import it just like it does on lapsic or make it part of lapsic, like yeah, we're using cool. the TBS timing system. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is, so, so they're making it so that tomorrow it'll send me the frequency and the time. And then I'll match that up to a pilot. Yeah. And so that's that's what the talk is for now. We'll see you know, what the future brings. And so tomorrow, just so you guys know, Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be running the infrared system, although we're also running this system. Yeah. Um, this because system seems to be working well. We've run it so far out here. It seems to be working well. We just want to be, we want to catch every single read. This is going to increase our accuracy. And nobody in the U.S. that I'm aware of has successfully run a video uh, receiving. We haven't allowed anybody. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, we appreciate it. And as organizers, I mean, one of the hardest parts is not having a timing system. It's having transponders. I know that yeah. I think uh, the TrackMate guy said we're their largest customer. And I don't even like bothering with transponders. We just, it's part of the deal. So. 
everyone's got a video transmitter. If they can use that for timing, that's a pretty exciting thing. Oh, he's yeah. going to be pissed. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can start making VTXs, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what is the range of working environment that that will capture? It's fully configurable. So um, Florian was running a, a race um, with like a three meter gate on a 100 by 300 size um, court. Uh, I was running a race in Korea where it was at 30 by 60 meters, so 90 by 150 feet, so really small space with 200 milliwatt VTXs with three meter gates. So you can, um, hang on, let me just show you. The question you're asking is, right now there's a chance you could fly over the top of the gate yeah, this is what I'm, I'm, and it could still register. Oh. I'm, I'm asking about not only you know that, but fixed wing where you have a larger yeah. area, How? what is the range that it's uh, it's up up to 15 meter gate size, so that's 45 feet. Um, the like 50. Oh, 150. Sorry. No, that that 50, 50, 50 meters. Yeah, so it's 150 feet. This is being placed on the side, top, right? wherever you want. <laughs> okay, so as it's as it's looking, it's got to be looking at it, at an angle, correct? No, it's a bubble. It's a bubble. So the the accuracy. We need to let Alex borrow it. That's <laughs> <laughs> just a laser beam off the moon. Uh, Florian, can't be sure. I love. You don't want to. don't want to read something on the other side of the field. Yeah, the accuracy is not that high, so I would say it's like plus minus three feet. Um, so so. Everybody's going to be read the same, pretty much the same. Yes. Yeah, as, as long as they're on the same uh, VTX power level. So that is one requirement, and, and um, everybody needs to be on the same VTX power level. Otherwise, the ones with the 200 milliwatt, they can. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it could be like 250 or, as opposed to 200, or, or, or does it have to be flat? Everything no, it's, it, yeah. with, within reason. Like uh, I would say within a factor of four. Um, so. Yeah, I can't say anything about the vortex. <laughs> I, I got a gag order. <laughs> and it's the same question after everything, how much it's going to cost us? Uh, we, we have absolutely no yeah, clue great. about hey, any of this. It's it's uh, at least going to be comparable to a system with 10 to 15 transponders, I would say, in terms of so price. So I've asked them specifically to give a special discount to a tier one chapter. And and we will be happy to do that because you guys are the That's most cool. active pilots. So uh, right now this is all like in development. So we we push new features uh, weekly, basically whenever Florin has time. So you run multiple ones. In, how many have you run at one time? Within, like, is it confined to a, a bubble? So you've got gate one picking up one and gate five over here picking up another. Do you control it with that configurable bubble? Yes. Right? Yeah. So how many have you run at one race, you know? Uh, boxes simultaneously? Yeah. Three. Just Three. Yeah. 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 Do you want uh, to push it? Have you have an idea of every gate almost? Or? I'm excited to see three. I never oh, I know. I know. It, it, it would be easily doable. Right. Uh, it's just a matter of cost, basically. Okay. I mean, two more questions. Okay. Yep. So what happens when technology advances and these guys uh, we, start We tracked races? digital uh, two weeks ago That's in Austria. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, same system. Everything the same. Um, plus, what's special about the Amimon system is that they can go below our frequencies, so they will be below the race band uh, on their entirely separate um, channels. So basically, that would open us up the, the opportunity to run more than eight pilots at the same time, right? So you would have maybe next year we will have races with 16 or 20 pilots at the same time. <laughs> Um, a lot of garbage cans. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we want, right? <laughs> All right, guys, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Oh. That was great right off the cuff. You just brought that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I Thanks. think it's uh, for us. It's mainly an, in, uh, an interactive thing because we don't have that much experience running races. Obviously, we can only run one race every weekend, so it's, it's
really interesting to see the perspective. Oh, we'll test. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have no doubt. Yeah. Really sad <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> Chris, can you take a picture of that cool thing? That cool thing. Yes, we can take a picture everywhere with this. It's going to be here all weekend. No. <laughs> <laughs>